What's going on beautiful people and welcome back to part two of the epic archer fish paludarium aquatorium fish tank thing. In the last video we set up a temporary tank for the fish that were in there before. We cleaned out the whole tank and we built the retaining walls that you can see behind with the wood all going over the top as well. Now at the end of the video I asked you guys your opinion on how we should like do the substrate, if we should go dark, if we should go light. It was kind of like almost 50-50. I say a lot more people are saying go natural. I'm gonna sort of go somewhere in between. I'm gonna use light salmon of Rio Shingu like I usually do, but I'm gonna use even more of the Rio Shingu so that it's like really detailed. So yeah, basically like you can see here in the uh, Rainbow Fish Aquarium, but way more of that stuff rather than a little bit of that and then lots of white sand, the opposite way around, I think that'll work well. Kind of like this on this aquarium, it's all misty. I've just done a big water change and a big cleanup, but um, which I don't usually do. <laughs> this tank hasn't had a water change for so, so long, but there was some horrible, like uh, moss ball type algae. Oh, it's awful stuff that was in the top there that I'm just getting rid of now. But yeah, this is what I'm talking about. More of the Rio Shingu rather than the sand. And also I don't want to have that big thickness right in the front of it as well. I want to keep that quite close to the uh, bottom of the tank, just because I think it will look better in this type of setup. First thing we need though, is that nice little sandy base layer to cover the whole lot. Now I don't need a huge amount of this, just enough to dust most of the front area, but I do need to build up some depth in like right in amongst the corners of the rocks, because we've got some plants obviously that we can put in there. And these are the plants I'm talking about of course. We've got the crypts, um, probably won't use all of the, oh, I don't know, there's only about six crypts in there actually. It looks like a lot more because they're so mature. And then we've got the background plant there, which is Hygrophila polysperma, and there's some Ludwigia there as well, looking so good. So that that background plant will go, well, in, in the background, of course, in, in that middle section, I think, be a nice little refuge area for any fish that just want to chill out. <laughs> saying it like it's some kind of lounge. And then I'll use the crypts dotted around some of the edges, uh, just keep it close. And I don't really want a lot in the foreground, I wanna keep it quite open. A couple of little rocks maybe just coming out, and maybe one of the crypts, but that's it. But before that, we now need to add in the Rio Shingu. I haven't got, I've got it down here, look. Haven't got anything like as much as I thought, so I might have to go and get some more. I'm not sure yet, but there is a good amount there though. Uh, you don't need a thick layer of it. I need to wash it first though. Now to wash it, I've got this little pot with like holes all picking up, yeah, holes all drilled in the bottom and then the water can run through. It's nice and quick. Right, we've got a whole bowl full of the Rio Shingu. Um, I don't think it's gonna be enough for how much area I wanna cover. So we've got this stuff as well. I might lay this down as a bit of a base and then that over the top. And the two, the two probably go quite well together. The reason I don't just use this is just that it's so uniform in size. Whereas what I love about the Rio Shingu look, it's just completely different sizes and shapes and colors. And, oh, it's beautiful. Okay, rounded gravel first in all the corners. Actually builds up those areas quite good as well then. Oh, look, that looks really good actually. And you know what, it's these kind of details that just transform your aquarium. Like just clean sand for me just looks absolutely artificial and rubbish. Some more over this side as well. Okay, looking good. Now let's transform it with the Rio. Oh, it looks so good straight away. That's what I mean, I can afford to be a little bit more sparse with it now. And if you look at the way I'm doing this, look, I'm not being careful at all. The best way to lay this stuff is just to get in there and get it on. You can't really make a mistake with it. And as was said in the comments before, if I don't actually like this look, I can always go over the middle again with some of the, uh, of the sand, just to bring it back to being sort of a lighter color, if I, if I want to. I don't think I do. Currently, this looks wicked. Oh, there we go, look, super details. Look at that, imagine this filled up, well, you don't have to imagine, because at some point in this video, it will be full of water. Uh, what I wanna do, though, is glue some of these wood pieces in place, because they will float, for sure. Quite simple to do, you can use super glue gel, or I'm just gonna use normal super glue with a bit of tissue paper, 
Uh, it, it creates more of a larger surface area, stronger bond if you do it that way. A bit more fiddly, but it's worth the extra effort. Right in there is where I'll glue it. And that is instantly rock hard. It was a bit of an awkward space, so I did spill a little bit of the glue, but it won't matter. I'll put a plant in there anyway. And I've done that at multiple contact points all the way around the scape as well. So the wood is stuck. We're doing well, we're doing well. It's now time to start adding the plant details. All these sort of cracks are perfect places for things like Anubius and Bulbitis and that kind of thing. Because they don't need to be planted into a substrate system, they can be just attached to decor, the roots actually go into all the cracks and everything looks really natural and they grow beautifully, pulling all of their nutrients from the water column. So we've got so many different places and options, bits of wood we can do it on in cracks. Out in the foreground as well, we can attach it to rocks if we want it in the foreground. So yeah, I'm gonna go over a really, really simple plant selection, but I think it's gonna be massively effective. So in my other studio here, I've got a plant nursery tank, I kind of call it. It's just a place that I just put epiphytes in and just plonk them down. Um, it holds some fish as well that are waiting to go in a new scape, that's coming soon. We've got some amazing bulbitis there, gorgeous Anubius, and there's some trident fern as well, so we're gonna use all of those for sure. Oh, that is a beautiful, oh, water everywhere. Right, I'm gonna start with the biggest bit first, which is this bulbitus, and I feel like it should be somewhat near the surface. I mean, I suppose I could break it up into two, but let's have a look, let's see what we can do here. I mean, that looks pretty cool, doesn't it, straight away. The good thing is it's locked in as well. Oh, hard to see it from back there, because the uh, it goes quite dark, but just, just any pieces of green look good, don't they? <laughs> and then just in front of it, we can put the Nubius as well. Oh yeah, I like that. And if we've got quite a bit there, so let's go on the other side now. Just fill in wherever you want. You can always just take it back out again, can't you? Nubius is perfect for just going in cracks though, look. Look at that, and that'll just stay there. Nice big piece of trident fern here as well. Oh my goodness, we're already looking like some kind of embankment. I'm loving it, just keep going. That's awesome, but I feel like there's enough greenery for now in the walls, otherwise we're gonna like lose the actual uh, the rock structure, which looks cool, doesn't it? We don't wanna, we don't wanna lose all of that. So it's just some good little crevices that would naturally have something sort of flow into it and get locked in. Now we can put in the crypts, crypts all around the edges, let's go. It does feel a bit of a shame to mess up this tank now, but not a problem. Looks like we are getting a little bit of crypt melt. That's to be expected. Whenever you move crypts, you do get them. They just hate, they hate being moved. And when you do, some of the leaves go a bit funny. Okay, around the edges for the crypts. I'm not actually gonna go too crazy. Just think a couple of little areas will look brilliant. Oh, that is so good. You know when you just, sometimes you just do things and they work. And that for me is just working. It's got a proper jungly vibe to it. Now I might close up that gap in the middle with the tall plants that are left in there. I might not, I'm not sure yet. It does look quite cool, a channel going back, doesn't it? We'll see how it goes. Fill up with water now so the plants don't completely just, you know, dry out. And then I can start getting sorted on the filtration system. I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna do yet, but whatever I do, I, it should look pretty good with the big plants I've got coming over the top. It doesn't need to be complicated, that's the thing. I'm just quickly filming this on my phone because the cameras did a time lapse, so the colors look a bit weird in the studio, like over bright. But I'm, as I'm filling this up, I'm making sure that I'm not walking away and leaving it alone. Now remember, everything, uh, all the rocks, they're not just on loose gravel, they're on each other, and then the gravel fills in the gaps. So the gravel and the axle is not load bearing at all, it's just, it's just piled in. Don't put this, the rocks, on top of the gravel. Use the gravel to fill in gaps, because otherwise it might shift around when you fill it up, and everything could just go <laughs> really, really wrong. I don't know, what do you think about the colours? Are the colours on, oh, it does this weird flashy thing, but hang on, can I fix that? There we go. Colours on my phone look like, they don't look real, I don't think, anyway. Oh my 
my goodness, that looks so good. Water level might come down, might go up, I'm not even sure yet. Once I've got the fish in, I'll be able to tell size-wise where we're at, but I think that's about right. Maybe a touch, a touch less than that, we'll see. But at the moment, all the crypts just stood upright. There's no flow, obviously. Uh, she'll be in later. <laughs> I mean, usually I save the flow jokes for uh, when Matt's about, but I, I just couldn't resist. But what we can do now is move up into these upper sections where we've got this gravel sat. There's more rocks going in and everything, but I wanna get some peace lilies either side first. Um, I've got a big one in the other room. I'm gonna bring it in and just sort of maybe divide it up into two, and then I'm probably gonna need to go and get more, to be honest. <laughs> Here it is. <laughs> it's absolutely huge. Some dodgy leaves that need to be cut off, um, but it's got a full root system. All these roots have just been sat in water. Like, there's no soil at all. So you can see how well it, this is like, yeah, about two years old and it's, it's massive. But do I keep it as one whole, no. If I have one there, it's gonna be so big. I'm gonna have to split it in two, I reckon, which is easy to do. You just find an area and just break it apart. Right, so I've removed most of the dead leaves and you can see, look, look at this mound of stems and things. And you can actually just break that in half somewhere there. Not easy because it's such a mass of roots. Oh, I've also got a hook on it that I <laughs> probably should have taken that off. But yeah, yeah, I used this wire piece originally when it was a small little plant, when it was just a baby plant, <laughs> to hook it onto the edge of the aquarium. Uh, it wouldn't make any difference now, given the size of it. It would just flop over anyway. That's how much it's grown. I just, this is a struggle to get this out. There we go, one piece. Two pieces. Right, now that's off, we should be able to just split this a bit easier. Okay, here's a bait. The good thing about peace lilies is they send out these little pups. That's a pup plant there. That's come away. There we go. So there we go, look at that. How cool is that? You get like a baby version. And now I've just got to keep going and splitting it off into sections. Um, <laughs> this is difficult. Oh, there we go, there we go. I want to keep some of the roots obviously as well. Yes, now we're getting somewhere. So there's two smaller plants there. I think I want one more section to come off. So we've got like a couple of smaller ones and then one big sort of main focal plant and I can mix in some others with these smaller ones as well. Right, I think the main plant over on this side, maybe. <laughs> oh, it already looks brilliant. Get the roots in the water a bit. That's it, push it into that gravel. It's gonna make a mess. I'm gonna have to do water changes and things, but so be it, but that is standing up nicely. In fact, I can actually sink that in a little bit further. You don't have to only have the roots underwater. It doesn't matter if any part of the, of the, the, of the whole plant is underwater. This here was fully submerged. So I can actually push that into the gravel and aqua soil because as you can see from the side here, we've got aqua soil underneath the gravel. So I wanna push that into that. All right, here we go. Just all I've got to do really is shuffle it around a bit, a little. There we go, it's going in, it's going in. It's making a hell of a mess, but it's going in. Now the peace lily will always try and grow towards the light. So what you have to do is like, for instance, this leaf here, this can come off, not a problem. Just give it a snap. And then we've got full lighting coming down into the tank as well. And then we can put some more over this side as well. Again, I do want to bury them in. The roots will find their own way where to go tucking them in underneath all that gravel. Yeah, I've just tried putting them in, tucking them in into the gravel section. Some are flopping over, so if I just put a nice big rock in this section, sit it upright. Oh, there we go. Already looking awesome. I mean, we're not done. We're not done at all. We want more at the top. <laughs> I'm gonna go and buy some more. I think I want some more baby ones that like can sit in the lower areas like down there. And there's a whole nother section on this side that's available. Uh, we wanna put something there as well because why not? You know, you can't have too much above your tank, can you? Can you? I don't, I don't think so. <laughs> okay, I'm at the shop, the garden center. We've got quite a lot. <laughs> it's like a jungle in here. Anyway, we've got a good variety of different plants. Uh, there's one fern here, which is it's in better days, but it is reduced, so might get it anyway. Uh, we've got some, is that pothos, I think there? I think it's said like that. But there is a monstera here, this one. I'm liking the look at this one in particular. Look at those leaves. I've had monstera before and I've done it the same method as the peace lilies and it works perfectly. So definitely go with that. 
Um, I don't know if these work. It's like a palm. Erica palm. A Erica palm. I don't know if these work or not, but I suppose I could give it a go, and if it doesn't, then just take it out. Yeah, try one of those, why not? So it is now the next day, and I've come in the morning, it's actually the morning. <laughs> You can't tell because there's no windows in this place, but um, the, the tank isn't looking its best. Yeah, you see what I mean? It's, uh, it's got a real murky tinge to all the water. You can see on the top, it's got like a film and a scum line. Now this is absolutely normal because A, there's no filters running, so there's no you know, finer particles getting removed from the water column, but also 99% of this is gonna be all from this wood, that there, then obviously we've got that piece at the back as well. It's just gonna keep leaching, isn't it? Now the way we combat that is we get the filtration set up, we get some purigen into the, uh, the filter and that removes all the sort of dark particles, the murkiness, and it will go absolutely crystal, crystal clear. So I, I'm not actually worried about it. And yesterday you saw me go to the garden center and this is what I managed to buy. Look at this fern around the corner, there was some even better ones. This is such good quality. I've never seen such a good looking fern. I'm a massive fern fan. I don't know if you guys are. In the garden, I always want to put ferns and my wife's like, no, they're boring, but maybe it's because they just look like the Jurassic Park. I think <laughs> that's what it is. It just reminds me of dinosaurs. And then we've got two monsteras in the end. We've got this massive one and then this different one. This is called a monkey leaf monstera. I don't know why it's called that. They they look like monkeys to me, but you know, they look cool. They're interesting, they're different. It's another texture. You know, we've got the smooth leaf. We've got that sort of holy, crinkly, weird leaf. And then we've got these, ah, oh, love them. But before these are placed in the tank, I do want to get the filtration sorted, get all the water all clear first. Now I've got a pretty, pretty good idea now of what I want to do. Uh, first of all, I've got one filter down here, which is an Awaze 350, I think it is, Fermo. So it's got built-in heater and stuff like that if you need it. It's got a pre-filter as well, which is awesome. So that'll, that'll make sure that that water goes completely clear, especially when we put some purigen in there as well. So that will do this side. And I'm gonna have the inlet just coming down here, but the outlet will just spit out over here where we'll build up rocks so it can all cascade down. I think that's the absolute best way of doing it without coming up with some kind of like custom job piping, which I've done before, but you know, it's, it's not really necessary. I can just use the flow of the water down the rocks. You can use moss and things like that to wick it anywhere you want as well. And then for the other side, I've got a really, really budget filter down there, some holes that come out the side and that will come up and I'll do the exact same thing on this side. We've already got this nice big rock here, haven't we? Which means the water can flow down that, flow down the other way. I'll build up both sides. So there's a gap where you can see stones there. I'm gonna build up both areas a bit higher you know, and on that side as well. And I just think then it gives us way more options of how to place the uh, the new plants in, different angles. It'd be cool to have something coming across a little bit, creating a little bit of shade over this whole area. Because eventually I'm gonna be able to put bugs and stuff in that the archerfish can shoot off. So they need leaves coming across. Oh, how cool would that be? Just getting the archerfish just spitting all the way across and capturing it on film. That's what I really wanna be able to do. And as an added huge bonus, all the fish are still doing really, really well in here. So that's definitely a good idea. I might just keep this tank here as one that I use as like a temp whilst I'm, I'm building like setups and things because it's just worked so well. It's taken so much pressure off trying to do it so quickly as well. And it just means you can make better decisions, more timely decisions, you know, send photos to your friends and stuff. I haven't got any friends, but if you have got any friends, then you can send them to them, <laughs> get their feedback and that. Yeah, brilliant. So yeah, we've got the filtration still to do. I also want to show you how to convert those sort of outdoor plants or house plants um, so that they can convert to be in in the water. It's quite a simple process, but you know, it might not be too obvious to some. Because it's all right me showing you the whole root system on a peace lily that's been, you know, underwater for two years, but how did we get there in the first place? So I'll take you through that process. Because when I first did it, I was confused personally about quite a few things. And it's, it's not so obvious, it's not obvious if you don't know. It's the same with everything, with fish keeping as well. If you don't know, it might be obvious to others but it isn't always obvious. After we've got those in, the filtration can be up and running and this should get really, really clear. And then after that, we can add in the fish back, what we're gonna do from the tank over there, off to the shop, and then we can get the new archer fish and put them in. I think it's a good idea to put them in after the other ones have been settled, um, just because they're bigger fish. Not like giant, but they're bigger than the originals. So yeah, that's all to come in the next episode. So if you are not subscribed and ding the bell and all that, you should really do that now, right now. And I'll see you on the next one. Yeah.